Hi, so this is a free video lesson for my new ebook, uh, Easy Classical Guitar Pieces, Volume 1, which is about 15 pieces uh, spanning from the Renaissance to the Romantic era. And it comes with a notation edition and a notation plus tab edition with fingering and these online video lessons. So you can get that as a downloadable PDF off thisisclassicalguitar.com. So this is Andante, Opus 60, number 14 by Fernando Sor. And I'll play the piece first, and then we will uh, just have a little lesson talking about the musical concepts involved, and some fingering tips, and just some ideas that you should think about before approaching the piece. Okay, so, so let's just talk about the piece a little bit. Um, I think the main thing in this piece, um, it's obviously a slightly slower piece than some of the other works in the collection. It's very minor, uh, and that's why I threw it in there, just for some relief from the major material, just like a nice serious minor piece. Um, <clears throat> as with the other pieces in the book, know the melody. Traffic outside. Knowing that melody really well will just make sure that the piece is tied together. It's not going to sound like just block chords everywhere. You don't really want the block chords to come out as like thump, chunk chunk, thump, chunk, you know, I think that you want the melody to be this nice shaped line um, that carries the listener through the piece and gives direction to the lines. So when you get into it, um, know that melody, shape it, and then when you add the other notes, you still want to be thinking melodically. shaped musical line. Um, <clears throat> other things to talk about is that in the right hand, in this particular piece, there's going to be a lot of repeating fingers. And I think that's okay in this particular case because the, t the tempo is pretty slow and you have lots of chords going on. So for example, I'm using I and M, then A, I and M, I and M, I and M, thumb, So when it's kind of a scale passage, use alternating IMs, but when you have those chords, um, just repeat fingers and get the balance really nice. Use your thumb for all the downstem bass notes, and you'll be fine. In the second part here, the first part's pretty straightforward in terms of its fingering. Second part, bar 10. This is first position, third position, first position, so, again, just want to make sure that it's very clear. And you, can, you can see I'm keeping my first finger on the second string the whole time, then keeping a third finger on the third string. 
that way it's ready for all that's coming afterwards. Um, in terms of the right hand fingering through there, any right hand fingering will work as long as you're alternating again. But just really pay attention to that those held fingers. First, the first finger is held, and the third finger is held. Bar 14. It's pretty straightforward. Just sneak the fourth finger in there. That way, the second finger can play the next note. Second position. So the first finger at the second fret. Sneak the second finger in for the A. And you're kind of back to this opening material. I would use A and then I and M. Then just play the chords. Okay, um, besides that, this piece has just one or two other things I want to mention in terms of, of how to shape the melody. At the end of bar four, just kind of the end of the first half phrase, A, or sorry, A, G. Um, that A is a suspension from the previous bar. A, A, G. When you have a suspension, going over the bar, that means the A and the E don't actually go together, so it's kind of spicy, so you want to bring that note out, A, and then resolve it to the G. The G is a resolution of the tension. So, third bar, maybe I'm overdoing it a little bit, but still, strong, weak on all of those. Which is the way you would sing it. And release. Um, follow the fingering very carefully. Utilize that fourth finger even on some of the bass notes as it requests just because you're going to need the other fingers for other things. The piece is probably like one of the harder pieces in the book in terms of like being an easy piece but I think it's easy in terms of it's basically first position playing so no weird you know nothing too out of the ordinary for the notes. Um, the tempo's slow enough that you'll have time to navigate all the tricky chords, but it's, it's difficult in the sense that there's lots of, um, there's lots of interesting chord shapes that you'll have to work out, and like, you'll have to follow those fingerings pretty carefully just to be able to play the piece. But I think it's very doable, and it's a lovely minor piece to add to your set if, if you're playing these easy pieces and you want like, some minor works in there. Uh, this is a nice one. So, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be doing lessons on all 15 pieces in the book, so... And subscribe to my YouTube channel and, and keep an eye on it. Thanks.